Hey, welcome back to another video this week. So into this video, I'm going to be doing something practical and something that's probably going to be useful for a lot of people, especially with the layoffs that's been happening right now in the, in the tech industry, software engineering, product manager, anything that's within the tech space. There's a lot of layoffs happening and I figured uh, it'd be a good challenge to do a web scraping tutorial where we can web, do some web scraping to go to indie.com and type in the criteria and then the location. And then we're gonna be writing some cover letter to just kind of speed up that process of applying for jobs, doing some job searching, and then creating a cover letter for it and then attaching our resume along with it. In this video, I wanna do something a little bit different. While I was doing some um, web scraping for Indeed.com and LinkedIn.com, I faced a few challenges, especially with the automation, with how they handled the bots hitting their platform especially Indeed, where they do have a CAPTCHA, where they do detect if you're running a bot. So web scraping is a bit of a challenge, especially with Indeed.com or uh, LinkedIn.com. So I was looking for a tool that I can use that would help me with this process. And that's when I found um, Epify, which is a platform that has all these different uh, tools. They have uh, proxy, they have qualities, uh, they have different things, but they do have tools that, that does um, web scraping. That's pretty much what they do. It's very similar to active pieces where they do have this concept of actors and tasks that you can run and you can basically uh, run these actors, which is predefined for doing web scraping for a specific sites and extracting certain information. I want to do a web scraping for indie.com with a job title parameter and then the location and then take that scraped information and create a cover letter letter for it so these are the things that you probably do when you're looking for a job you're you're going to scan through these websites type in your criteria and then create a cover letter for it it's kind of a repetitive task so i figured we're going to let ai do all that hard work for us so here's what we're going to be doing today we're going to be exploring the ap5 platform I kind of mentioned actor previously, but it's essentially an actor is a step that you can repeat over and over again. You, you can run an actor in the cloud similar to an active pieces flow where it has a pretty fine steps such as web scraping, go to a website, do some web scraping of the data and then extract that information. So an actor essentially is that and then it, it, it takes an information parameter such as the job title and the location or whatever parameter it requires for that thing that you want to run for. And a task is pretty much very similar to an actor where it sits on top of a, an actor, but a task is very specific. So if we're looking for a product manager job as an input parameter, that's going to be that's going to be run over and over again. And it's going to be using that actor with certain parameters already in place so we can run that task quite easily. So what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be doing automation for going to indie.com, doing a job search, and then we're going to be supplying it with some parameters such as the job title and also the location. And then we're going to let AI create a cover letter for us and we're going to be writing it to Google Docs. So that's going to be baked in as part of the automation process that we're going to be making. We're going to be storing everything in a table where we're going to be storing the, the job titles, the company information, the cover letter. So we're going to be writing it to Google Docs. So we're going to be linking it and in, in storing the actual URL to Google Docs inside the AI table. And we're also going to be storing the URL for the Indeed job where we can actually apply for that job. Go straight to it. Um, I'm not going to be covering the notification um, aspect for this tutorial, but I've covered the notification uh, in my previous video on Upwork. So go check that out if you haven't um, done so. But essentially, um, it grabs um, information from a table and based on a column, that's going to be used to signify whether that that job has been sent to us via an email already as a digest. So we're going to be setting up a table to accommodate this step right here but we're not we're not going to be covering the automation piece of it as far as the automation is concerned we're going to be setting up two two automations in active pieces we're going to be creating a flow which is, is triggered via a schedule and that can run on a daily basis or a weekly basis and then from there we're going to be running the ap5 actor we're going to be grabbing the actor id 
I'm going to be showing you how to set up the actor within APFI. And then we're going to be feeding that actor ID right here. And then it's going to be scraping and it's going to give us the data set, which we're going to be using, which is basically the jobs that we've scraped, which includes all this information. So we're going to be storing every, all this information inside of a table, including the title, description, pay information, URL, cover letter, and so forth. And then we're going to feed the AI the description and the job title, and we're going to be creating a cover letter for us. So everything's going to be written by AI, and we're going to be writing that out into Google Docs. The second flow is going to be very similar to that, except that we're running an AP5 task in instead of an actor. A task is not necessarily going to return a data set right away. So we're going to have to run an extra step here where we can grab the actual uh, default data set once the um, AP5 task has completed and it succeeded. And from there, once we got the data set, we're going to go and loop through each one and we're going to be creating a cover letter for each one. An extra step here that I didn't cover in this diagram is we're going to be doing a matching between our skill set that we've defined and the actual description in the job title. And we're going to do a matching and we're going to have the AI decide if that job is something that we want to apply for or something that we don't really care for. So if it's something that we don't really care for, then we're going to skip. We're not going to store it in inside of a table and also we're, we're going to skip having to create a letter for it. So essentially just to save us um, some tokens or AI credit, since that's really not relevant for our skill set. So that's going to be what we're going to be covering today in this video. Hopefully you learned something from it and hope you subscribe and yeah, let's get to it. All right. So let's walk through the uh, AP5 documentation real quick. I just kind of give you a high level here. So you do have uh, an API here that you can use. It does give you some ways or some documentation on how to authenticate and how to use. You have this URLs where if you want to run an actor, for instance, you can include an actor as part of that run and you can use it this way. And then your token is going to be part of your query parameter. So this is if you want to run it on an API basis. You do have some web hooks as well. And then you do have ways where after an actor is if you want to call a webhook, for instance, for certain actions that takes place, such as when you're running an actor or a, an actor has completed, then it can run a webhook for you. So there's some cool features here they can use and take advantage as far as the AP5 platform. And they do have some scheduling in place too. If you want to run these web scraping jobs on a scheduled basis, then you can use the scheduled from the AP5 itself. And then you can do a webhook here where you can, for instance, you can create a webhook in, in active basis and create a webhook where AP5 is going to be calling and they're going to be sending the results for you. Then you can do additional automation in place on top of that. So you can also do it that way as well if you want. You have plenty of options here as, as far as how you can use AP5 itself. But we're not going to be using the API here or we're going to be using the SDK since we're going to be in active basis we're going to be taking advantage of the AP5 SDK for JavaScript and Node. let's go ahead and get into the platform I'm going to go ahead and log in once you log into AP5 here here's what you're going to be seeing so we're going to just collapse this real quick so you're going to see the home page where you can see all the actor that you have ran and then it includes the duration and then the results how many data set has been scraped from the running that actor and then how many are scheduled from here you can go to the store where pretty much a lot of developers have published their own actors that anyone can use so let's go ahead and take a look at one of them so in this case there's this actor where it is specifically for google maps scraping you can see here how many people are actually using this actor and it's created by this person he, he has his input where you can feed in a, a term here what to look for and then the location and how many places that you want to get out of the, the run. The main thing here that you probably want to pay attention to is pay, pay for usage. Every time you use this actor, it's going to cost you some money. In this case, it's maintained by AP5, so there's no cost in addition to the, the feed when you're running this. Since you're running this on the cloud, it costs money to run this actor. So let's go find another one that's not maintained by AP5. Let's take a look at this one right here which you can see here that this this particular actor costs a dollar fifty per thousand tweets that's been scraped so this is going to go to the developer or whoever's created this one 
right? So it's a, it's a community actor. So in addition to the AP5 fee, you're gonna also have to pay a dollar fifty per thousand tweets when you, whenever you use this actor, and it's gonna cut into your budget here. Which in the free tier, uh, you probably don't want to exceed the five dollar limit. We're gonna be looking for an Indeed actor, so because that's what we're in interested in. So we're gonna go to the store and let's, let's go look for a web scraper here. Let's get everything. The main thing that you want to do here is you want to grab everything that you can use for free, right? If you go to one of go those actors, uh, it's going to cost you $5 for a thousand results, right? You're going to have to look at all these different actors and see which one is capable without having to cost you a little bit of money. So this one costs $29, $29 per month plus the usage of building it and running this task in AP5. So you probably want to avoid something like this, right? So one trick that I've found is if you go here and you want to switch to maintained by AP5, you're only going to be seeing the ones that are maintained by the AP5. Most likely, it's not going to cost you a lot of money, right? For a thousand results, it's going to cost us $5. And that's about it. So which is perfect for us because that's how much we have per month anyways. So if each month for each thousand results that we scrape each month it's only going to cost us five dollars so perfect one thing that we can do is we can inspect the different parameters that this actor accepts so it accepts a position here accepts the country and the location we want to and then we can also specify uh, how many items and max that we want to scrape right so since we want to stay under a thousand we probably want to limit this every run right so we don't want to grab uh, 100 at once or so on and so forth so i think we're going to stick to a lower number here so we always get a fresh scrape data every time we do some scraping and there's some other stuff here as well such as the max currency if you want to uh, speed up the process how many can run simultaneously in the background uh, which we don't really care about because we're not really aiming for speed here we just want to make sure that we get the data set that we want there's some run options here that you know type type of machine how much memory are we running this um, on top of when we run it? We want the latest build. We can define these things. What's the timeout in seconds? Once we reach the seconds, that's pretty much going to be timing out. Or we can allow it to just keep going for a very long time. And yeah, and that's it. And you can just start from here. This is the manual way of doing it. So if you want to run it from within AP5, you can go ahead and, and run this within with certain criteria that you have. One additional option that you can also do here is you can create a task based on this one, which already includes this pretty fine information here, right? When you create a task based on this one, you see here that we can define this based on what we're looking for. For instance, let's say I want to change this, right? So within a location, I want to look within Los Angeles, California, within the United States. Um, one thing that you can do here is you can, you can create a task for it. So you can name this Indeed Scraper, Indeed Scraper for software engineer and then you can click continue here and this is going to create a, a new task and then you can pretty much define additional information here such as software engineering within los angeles so this is going to be your criteria within this task so like i mentioned before a task is pretty much has built in input already baked in as part of the task so but that's going to be the difference between these two you can go ahead and run this you can get out of here and save it. So when you go back, it will have the task information. Uh, you can also go ahead and save it. So this is pretty much um, how you create a task based on an actor. You can run an actor you, or you can run a task which already has pre-filled pre information for what type of um, job are you looking for. So we're going to be exploring both of these concepts um, when we start automating. You can see here on the top that you can also click on the API, which includes the API clients and an endpoints. I'm going to click on this API clients. I've set up here a couple of uh, a separate token here so we can access this from active pieces. But essentially, you have some SDK for Node.js in Python, and it gives you some code here that you can run. And then it also already includes the task ID for this as part of this example that they provided here, which is nice. So you can do the same thing if you go back to the actors, you can go back to the scraper. You also have this API clients here. So when you go to the actor, you can see that's a little bit different because the actor requires an input. The nice thing about these codes is you already have the actor ID, which is already specified here. All you need to do is just copy this in your code base and then it's pretty much ready to go. And you need to 
include this apify client as part of this you have to install the npm so that's going to be it for running the api clients let's go and set this up in active basis let's start this automation by creating a data sheet inside uh, a table here so i've pretty much defined um, a data sheet here it's called job search uh, and we already add the different columns that we, we want so we want the title the company and the seller information if it's given it's available we're also going to be including the posting date which is going to be a text here and then the actual job description so you can see here that if you expand on this one you're going to be seeing all the different things available here I include the url description and so on and so forth and then the date it was posted which is a formula field i'm going to show you how that works and then this includes the url where the job posting was made whether we applied for it we added a checkbox here and then emailed here so it, i, I kind of mentioned the email digest so if you want to use it for emailing purposes then you can include this emailed uh, field here which basically allows you to track whether this particular job was already sent via an email in the digest there's also a cover letter link here which is linked to the google docs where the cover letter is located so if we click on this one there's an example that i've created so i already have a fictitious name here and then an address and then date where you can add it here this includes the company and then here's the person that posted the job and here's the actual body of the letter which includes the relevant information regarding my skill sets and in relevance to the actual job posting itself and then some explanation here why i'm a perfect candidate for this job and so and so forth thank you for considering my application and then warm regards john smith and this is the email and then my phone number so that's what we're going to get when we uh, generate the cover letter but this is the makeup of the actual data sheet and job search data sheet so i'm just going to go through this so the title is a single line text the company is also a single line text salary is a single line text the posting date I just made it a single line text because of the time zones information, but I've added a formula here, which I'm doing some formatting on the actual date posting. So when you create a formula in a table, it goes in this format where you can specify the actual function name and then inside the, uh, the column, you can specify the posting date within this color basis and then comma, and then the, the type of format. The formula has different um, parameters uh, involved in it, so you're gonna have to pick which one, uh, but you can kind of go through it. You can do some parsing here, which kind of tells you the type of uh, input format, which fields, and as you go through all these different formulas, it'll kind of give you instruction how to use it and which fields, such as date one, date two, when you're defining the difference between two dates. In this case, where we just want to create a format here, where we want to do a month, month, day, day, and then year in this format. So that's what we want to show. And then if you want to hide this field, then we, we actually don't need this. So that that date is still going to be there, but everything now is going to be uh, created in this format using this formula and this date, date posted column. So going back here, the description is going to be a long text. And that's going to be the job description and then they apply a checkbox which has this custom icon same thing with the email field which is this is a true or false type of field the cover letter is just a url field type and that's it for the actual a table data sheet so now we can use this in the actual activities automation let's start this first automation here so the first automation that we're going to be doing is going to be to run the actor based on the actor id so we're going to go ahead and grab the actor ID once we set it up. So first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be triggering this based on the, the schedule. So we're going to be looking for a schedule here. And that's what we're going to be doing as a trigger in our first step. The next step I'm going to be doing this is my own preference. I'm storing all my keys in the storage. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the key. So I'm going to type storage here. And I believe let's go ahead and trigger this first. So I can trigger this to run every day or every week. However, many, many times I want to trigger this. I'm going to try to run this every day. That's fine. I want to run it probably like 7 a.m. in the morning and then it's Angela's time. I think that's fine. And I want to exclude the weekend. So let's go ahead and run this one. And here from here, I want to grab and get my API key. Right. So I'm just going to grab the key and which has this key information. So I'm just going to run this. 
which is going to print out my AP5 key, which I'm going to be deleting before I post the video online. So this is going to be grabbing the AP5 key so I can reuse that. Once we get here, we're going to be looking for the code where we're going to be running the AP5 uh, actor. So we're going to be grabbing the code here and then we're going to be feeding the AP5 key. So we're going to be uh, specifying the if AP5 key here, and then we're just going to be um, setting up and setting the results of the AP5 key value here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and expand this, kind of go through the code. Let's go ahead and go back to actual AP5. So once you're, you're back in AP5, keep in mind that there's actors and there's save task. So a task is derived from the actors, but we're going to start from the actors first. Let's go ahead and go click on the actors, and then we're going to click on Indeed Scraper here. So from here, let's go back to the API clients. So you can see here, we have to install this. We have to do an NPM install on this API 5 dash client SDK. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that. I'm just going to go back to active pieces. I'm going to add a NPM package with that. And then that's going to be this particular version. Let's go ahead and go back to uh, here again. Let's go ahead and just copy. Let's just copy everything here. All right. So and just, let's just bring it back to active pieces you can kind of see how it works so just for reference i'm just going to go ahead and paste that here so the first thing we're going to be uh, needing here is we're going to instantiate a new ap5 client we also have to reference the actual we have to import the ap5 client on the top just like the example so let's go ahead and do that all right so once we do that we're going to go ahead and grab the ap5 key here all right so we're going to be bringing that in as part of the like a constant so we're just going to go ahead and destructure it as part of the inputs so we're going to be grabbing this ap5 key parameter as far as inputs and then we're going to be running some code on top of that so let's go ahead and define a function here i'm going to be doing an async function scrape indeed by using actor let's go ahead and, and just be more explicit about this and then we're going to be like key as a string and i believe we also need to grab let's see so we can define these input parameters outside of this as an input parameter we can go ahead and extract different things so we can feed it as part of this code editor so we can feed in the position the country and the location and also maybe a the max item so we're going to be feeding these for information in addition to the ap5 uh, key as part of this input parameter i haven't really defined that yet but and do country country and then location and then max items so and then we're going to bring that in we're just going to go ahead and bring the whole input parameters here so we're just going to go ahead and just define everything and that's going to be the function and then we're going to be calling it right here where we're going to be passing in the actual inputs so instead of actually destructuring here we don't need to destructure this anymore we have to destructure it from down here and we're going to be calling this input instead i should just just call it inputs all right so and then we're going to go ahead and await that because it's this it's an is, is, uh, async function and then we're just going to return the result of this function to the calling code so that's going to be the actual once we got that if you find key information position country let's go ahead and define that so position country i believe max items Atoms and location, All right? I think location would be, I think, Angeles and then max items. I just want to give it like a five and then just want to provide it United States and then position. So uh, I'm looking for a uh, software engineering position. Let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be the input parameter. It's going to be the AP5 key and then in the different position, different parameters that actor requires in order to actually run. So we got that inside of here. We can format this code. So now we got the input here. Now we need to actually run this, right? We can feed this in. A couple of things that we can do here, you can pass in the actor ID. So we can also pass in the actor ID here so we can kind of reuse this function or code for other things. So if you want to just make this dynamic later on and we supply this actor ID and be dynamic that way, I think that's probably much better for us. And one thing that we also forgot to define is we have to create this AP5 client here, which is required. As far as token is concerned, I'm going to move this up and then that's going to be requiring the AP5 key here. 
So that's going to be the token. It's going to be the actual AV5 key. And then the input is the actual instead of inputs. Yes. But in our case, we don't want to include everything, right? We, so we don't want to include AP5 key and the AP5 key and actor ID. So in, you also include the actor ID as part of this one as well. So actor ID is going to go right here. So we're going to go ahead and format that real quick. And then from here, we just copy the next line of code, which is the actual items. This actual items is going to be the data sheet that's going to be provided. It's going to call this data set, which will uh, basically pass in this default data sheet that comes from this run, and it's going to list out the items. And then from here, we can pretty much return the resulting items that we receive here. Yeah, and we can go ahead and do a test run here and see what it does. All right, so missing after arguments list. You can see here, see what we're missing. Client, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're missing. One thing that we can do here is that instead of passing everything in the inputs, we just want to provide everything. So if we go back to the parameters here, we want to provide position, country, max, items, location, but we want to exclude the actor ID in the AP5 key. So we want to grab everything except for those two. So one thing that we can do is basically declare the actor ID and the AP5 key first, and then we can just do a rest operator here. We can just basically actor which will include the rest of the parameters of the input, which exclude these two right here. So instead of the inputs, we're going to go ahead and pass the actor parameters here. We can go ahead and verify that instead of returning items right now, we can go ahead and return the actor params and you can see what is inside of it. So let's go ahead and return that and let's just go ahead and test the code. So you can kind of verify what is being passed in here. You see the client missing after arguments list. Wait, let's go ahead and delete this one first. Let's go. All right. So for some reason, the commented out code is was causing an issue. So if you go ahead and return its actor params, you can see here that it's earning returning the country location, max items and the position from the inputs, right? So we're taking out the actor ID and AP5 key and then only using it to perform this client and passing the actor ID here. So let's go ahead and get rid of this actor param as return and then just comment and comment this out and then we can run this and see if it works. So the country must be equal to one. Let's see here. Oh, all right. So the country has to be US. That's kind of what one of the countries has been specified. Let's go ahead and run it again. Okay. So I encountered this issue when I was testing this automation in the first place. And you see here that the field max item must be an integer, even though we're defining it as, as I guess it's an integer here. So right now it's looking at it as a string. We have to convert the max item in, into an integer before we can pass it. So one thing that we can do is we can do a extra params and then max items, and then we can convert this into a number. So we can go ahead and then max items. So we're just basically pulling out the max items and reassigning it back, what, but it's changed into an actual number instead of the actual string. Let's go ahead and run that. So if you go back to AP5 here, it looks like it's running. You see here, it just finished. We just caught it at the right time. So it kind of gave us the results of five. If you go back to active pieces, it looks like it's, there's an array and it's a position name, salary information, job type, some rating, reviews count, and so on and so forth. It looks like it worked. So that's pretty much running this actor is, right? So let's go ahead and rename this, run AP5 actor. And that's going to be the code for running an actor. And then from here, we're just going to go ahead and include the loop. And then we're just going to be specifying the actual result from running that AP5 actor. From here, we're going to have to run it again. So when we're running this, you can go back to AP5 here. You can see here that it's initializing the crawler. You can kind of peek in through it and kind of see what's going on. Um, so far, it's been running for 20 seconds and then includes this parameter, which we've specified uh, when we call the SDK, which is which is internally is running, is calling against uh, an API. So that's exactly what's happening. And it should be storing the information within the storage. The data sets can be stored in the storage once the actual job is completed. 
So it looks like it's requested, the one of 21 has been handled. And then you can see there the price, how much it costs us to run. So which is not too bad at all. So it's been running for a minute. And then if you go back to active pieces, you can have a clear view of what has just ran. You can see here an array and inspect it. So there's like 18 properties within each one, including the position name and so on and so forth. So this is what we're going to be using to insert into a data sheet inside a table. So let's go ahead and, and loop through the items here. Let's go ahead and go drill down to run AP5 actor. We're just going to insert that because that's going to be the actual array itself. And then we're going to go ahead and test this step and see here. All right. So now you see the, the individual items within the actual loop in here. Next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be, we're going to be calling AI. So we're going to be, I'm going to be using Straker here, which I've been using so I can use different large language models. So I'm going to be using G, GPT 4.0 today. So we're going to be looking for GPT 4.0. And then I'm going to go back to my board mix to grab the prompt that I'm going to be using. And it's going to be in the board mix so you can reference it when you run this automation. So I'm going to be copying that here. It's going to be inside the actual Actually, we don't need to specify the double quotes, but it's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and specify it. So the job description, this is where we're going to be supplying the job description. But instead of this description right here, placeholder, we're going to be passing in the loop on item. So we're going to go ahead and go to item, first item, and then we're going to go drill down to the actual description. So that's going to be the description. And then here's the prompt. Act as a hiring manager, please review the provided skills and so on and so forth. And then I have the skill sets provided here. And I just want to make sure that this matches at least 60% of my skills. It's going to be based on this job description. So it has to match at least within 60%. If it's not, it's going to give me a true or false based on that. And the AI is going to be figuring out if this is something that I should be applying for or not. And and that how, that's how we're going to be determining how we're going to move forward with this automation. So I'm going to go ahead and name this task, does this job align with my skills, right? So that, that's going to be the actual name of this step. And I'm just going to run this and see if this actual particular one is within the range, right? So it says here, the, f uh, the skills provided does not meet at least 60% of the job description. So the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to be uh, doing a branch here and then we're, we're going to be passing in the actual result of that that call to Straco API and we're going to be looking if if the actual the response comes back as containing a value of true. So let's going to go ahead and do that. Since it's a false, it's going to fall on the right side. But if it does, we're going to go ahead and uh, proceed with creating a cover letter. So let's go ahead and bring in Straco one more time where we're going to be including the uh, GPT-4. I'm including Ask AI and then I'm going to be using my existing connection and then I'm just going to do 4.0 oh, and then that's going to be the prompt. It's going to be in my board mix, which is here. So I've set up a, a dummy prompt here, which I've created using Straco. So let's go ahead and pop this in. And then pretty much this is my personal details. I pretty much put some dummy information here for demo purposes. So it includes my address. You want your address to be here and then your position and then the skill set. So this skill set right here matches the first one from step five, which basically includes the experience and then the job description. We're just going to um, populate this with the position, which we've gathered from when we loop through the item. So this is going to be the actual, uh, see, going to be the position itself position name and then this is going to be the company information we're just going to go ahead and put this one in and then the responsibilities the responsibilities is going to be just the job description for this particular job so and variables it's going to be part of the prompt so all these is pretty much like static information that's like that's my personal details that's going to be based on my skill sets and so on and so forth. And then the ones below are pretty much dynamic based on the scrape data from the job posting. So, so this one's going to be creating a cover letter. There's no specific format. Let's go ahead and title this create cover letter and let's go ahead and execute this. So I'm assuming it falls on the true part of the branch. Um, it's going to create a test cover, cover letter for us. 
let's go ahead and expand this one and kind of take a look so it includes the, the name of the person the address and so on and so forth so we can't really see it that well but we're going to go ahead and create a, a google document here all right go back to my google sheets here this is my account for demonstration purposes i'm going to be using that one so we're going to go ahead and add a new step here for creating a google docs and search for google docs you have to establish your connection obviously we're going to go ahead and create a document here and i'm going to be using my connection and then i'm just going to create a document title here that includes the actual position and the actual company so it kind of is very unique for each one so we can see the actual document which company is it for and what uh, position we're applying for right off the bat so let's go ahead and grab the actual uh, job position here uh, at the bottom position name and then we're going to do dash and then we're going to be just appending the actual company information so it's going to be position name dash the company and then the document content is going to be the actual the cover letter so we're going to be inserting that and let's go ahead and retitle just create well document and that's going to be that it's going to go ahead and do a test and let's go back to google drive here so within a few seconds you should get a new document here assuming that it completed so it looks like it, it gave us a document id so let's go back here to go do a hard refresh here looks like it's not refreshing all right so it's a full stack developer and then this company right so dash what this company is let's go ahead and take a look at that cover letter so you can see here the, co the cover letter includes the fictitious name the address and the current date which we need to change when we do apply for this of job hiring manager superpath inc their hiring manager i'm writing to express my interests with a decade of experience software engineering and a comprehensive skills and then it lists out my skill sets and then in my current role so all this information that's basically i've included as part of this prompt right and then cross-functional teams that design deploy new features marrying the collaborative environment at this company Right. It's cool that it's able to come up with and create this cover letter for me. And then at the bottom, it does a signature. But yeah, so that's going to be the actual path itself. So when we link this back into a table, we want to be able to link into this document in Google Docs. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, that URL. This is what we're going to be using. We're going to be including this when we insert a record in a table. So let's go ahead and see here when we create a google document it only returned the google, the document id and nothing else so we need to uh, create a url that includes this document id as part of this url se url segment so let's go include uh, an insert to a table so let's go ahead and uh, search for a table and then we're going to go ahead and create a record here and then we're going to be using a uh, my connection and the space and then i think i named it uh, job job search so that's includes the title information, but let's go ahead and jump into the actual cover letter first, because that's going to be uh, dynamic. So we're going to be using the document ID that we received from the previous tip. So instead of this 19 here up to the, before the forward slash, we're just going to go ahead and get, remove that one. And we're just going to grab the, we're going to go to step eight and we're just going to grab the document ID. So we're, we're going to be incarnating this URL into this URL segment. I'm going to be the D forward slash the document ID and then forward slash edit. And that's going to be the actual, like the Google uh, document URL for this. So we can, we can easily go back to go and check out the cover letter if you want. For the URL, some of the, it's, it's pretty much straightforward from here. We're just going to go ahead and include the, the URL for the actual job itself. And in the description, it's going to be that right here at the bottom the posting date. So let's go ahead and instead of the scrape that we're going to be this kind of actual posting date parsed. And then the salary is going to be the actual salary. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. That's going to be this and then the company information and then the actual job title. Let's see positioning, which is the, the positioning. So let's go ahead and give that a test. All right, let's go back to um, a table here real quick. All right, so this is the, the new entry that we just we just added. Also includes the salary information. Some job posting includes salary, some doesn't. So it's gonna be blank if it doesn't. The company information, the title, and then the, the description. 
which also includes that date posted, which is nicely formatted based on what we want. And it includes the actual URL. And if you scroll down to the right hand side, it actually includes the actual link to the cover letter. So you click on it, it's going to go ahead and open up the actual, the same cover letter that we've take a look at previously. So that's what it looks like. So we kind of take a look at this one, kind of see everything, see the whole description. You can see here it's a very lengthy description with all the different criteria that they're looking for for this specific job. So that's going to be that for this for running an actor. Instead of going to and uh, creating the whole automation from scratch, I basically just have everything. I'm just going to go walk you through the whole automation for running the AP5 task here. So it's very similar concept, except that obviously we're running the task instead. Let's go back to AP5 real quick. So you can see here the task that we have. So instead of the actor, we're going to go to task instead. So we can go ahead and inspect the actual task itself. From here, you can grab the, the actual task ID from the top, or you can actually go to the clients, which also give you the same ID here. You can just copy it and, and pop it in as part of your automation. So that's going to be the task ID. So, so I'm also grabbing the key here, same thing as the previous one. For running the AP, AP5, AP task, instead of passing in the actual um, parameters such as the location of the job uh, just, and so on and so forth, everything is just self-contained within the task itself. All you need to do is specify the actual task ID and all the parameters that uh, you've defined such as the the job title that you're doing a search, search for or the location and then the country. All that is encapsulated within the actual task ID. So you just need to specify the task ID and we just need to specify the AP5 key, AP5 key here, and then we can just run the code. So, but let's go ahead and inspect the actual code here by going through it. So it's a much simpler code here. Similarly, we're going to be including the AP5 client SDK as part of it. So you're going to go ahead and run add NPM package on that one. We've defined a asynchronous function, which accepts a task ID and AP5 key. Similar to what we had before, we're creating a new instance of the AP5 client, which we've imported from this AP5 client, and we're passing in the, the token, which is the AP of AP5 key. And then instead of the client that actor that call, we're going to be, we're going to be uh, passing in the task. We're going to be calling the task function and we're going to be passing in the task ID. And then we're going to be calling call on it. And we don't need the console log. And then from there, we're going to grab the default data sheet and we're just going to list the actual items. Sometimes the problem that you're going to be encountering here is if you have a task that that's going to be long running, for instance, if you specified a limit of a thousand max limits, you might encounter here where you're not going to get the items back, which is the data sheet, which is the actual, the jobs itself, right? <clears throat> so one thing that you can also do is once this runs, you can run this get AP5 task here, which kind of gives you like a, a little bit of uh, metadata here. And it tells you things that you need to know, such as the, the actual status. You can look at the status here. You can inspect it and see if the job or the task is still running in the background or not. So this is how you check. So you're going to be passing in the task ID here, right? And you're going to be looking at the actual run specific to this one. This is the actual run, not the task ID. If you go back to AP5 here, when you do a run, for instance, we do have this specific run ID that's tied to an actor or a task. And that's what you need to feed into the when you check and and check the status for that run and it's going to give you the actual the status for that run whether it's succeeded or it's still running right so once that's completed you can do a loop for instance where you can continue to just run it until you get a succeeded status once you get that succeeded status then you can go ahead and fetch the actual data set that's part of that run default data set id i'm passing in the default data set id so I have these two steps to step four and five. In any case, if you have something that runs for a very short time, most likely you're going to get the actual data set right away. For instance, in this case, I'm actually getting the actual data set, which means that I don't really need these two tasks, subsequent tasks here, which is this one and the data set because everything is ready here returned by this code. So I can just go ahead and go add a loop on item step here 
which I can specify and specify for that code. You just kind of have to figure out whether it's something that's going to be a long running task where you need to keep checking whether that task task completed. You might have to run a webhook and create a new flow here in active pieces to be able to tap and continue the actual automation. Or you can specify a lower, lower number, such as five in our case. It's going to be the same thing after you get the actual data set. I'm just going to be specifying here a step where using Straco here. I'm using Ask AI. In the previous flow, I've specified the, the GPT-40 for actually determining whether this job aligns with my skills. And I actually switched it to Anthropic Cloud 3 Opus and it actually gave me a true or false response. But you can play around with this, right? So with Cloud 3 Opus, you get like a true, which is what I want, so true or false output. But if I switch this to a GPT-40, right? And let's go ahead and run this. It's actually, it's giving me a string. Sometimes it, in the previous runs, it actually gives me some other text, some other explanation on why it responded a specific way. But so in this case, it's still not what I want because I'm looking for, in my prompt, I'm looking for either a true or a false. So this is like an uppercase true with an uppercase of T, which not what I wanted. So Opus is actually a better model to use in our case here. So it's the best tool for the job, right? So it gives me what I want is in actual true. And then I can do a check here, which I can verify whether this actual job meets my skill set, right? In our case, it responds to be true. So this condition should be true and it should fall into the left side of the branch, which is true, right? So in this case, it's going to continue and actually create the cover letter for me based on the job description and the job title. So it's same thing as was what we had before. I pre-filled the actual position name, the co company responsibilities, which is this job description, and then go ahead and with this information, personal details, just go ahead and write the cover letter for me. And then from here, it created a response and then it's gonna go ahead and create a document in Google Sheets, uh, pretty much document title with Dash and with the company. And then I'm gonna be including the content, the output from the previous step, which is when I asked AI to generate a cover letter for me. I'm gonna be including that and I'm creating a document based on that. So, and then the last step would be in inserting into the AI table, which pretty much the same thing as previous ones. I'm concatenating the document ID with the, the rest of the document, Google ID URL segment, and then it's going to be including that. And then the actual, actually, this is the actual URL, not the cover letter. So I'm going to move it here. And then the URL would be the actual, actual loop on items, which is going to be the URL of the job. Where is it? Right there. So if you go ahead and retest this one, and that should in insert a new uh, record here, which includes a URL they posted, job description, salary information. And then if you go down and go to the right side, it's gonna go ahead and give the link to the cover letter, which it generated based on this company with the cover letter itself. So yeah, so that's the automation itself. Very, very easy. I'm probably gonna be using APFI a lot more. I'm really enjoying using the tool and it's very clean. It was able to automate and scrape the contents from indie.com. I'm probably gonna be trying out the linkedin.com web scraper as well. So yeah, so that's gonna be for this video. If you like this type of uh, video, go ahead and please um, subscribe to my channel and please uh, click like on this video. Leave a comment if there's anything that you want me to do an automation and, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.